And here we go. I think I'm live here on the Dort table on this Saturday, the 11th of April, 2020. For those of you out there in Radio Land who aren't going to go pay tribute to the dead guy, uh, one of the other musicians died, I forget his name already. Um, John Prime, okay. Anyway, am I live? You got me here? Eh, Rob Works says you're live. So I guess we'll start out with the traditionals. Uh, but first, I heard from Mary before the show. She's still not up to yakking and laughing and carrying on, but she said she's feeling better. But the pain pills were making her a little sleepy. Pain in whatever she was taking. So, I would assume they were pain pills if they're making her tired. Now, we got uh, got a little lineup for you tonight in the reallibertymedia.com chat room so you can bash your brilliant ideas against other people and get attitudes and opinions. Now, for your reading, we've got Barman, Beetle, and Cowboy Tech, Grimner, and Moose Girl, and Kate. Anti Chalcedony and Cirque. Hey, honey. Uh, Dan Van Meter, duh. Me, Frumpy, Frumpy Work, Graham Z, but she's asleep. Meister Brow, who took off. He's bailing on us. We got Prince and Rob Works, Rome's Trust, number one. Vanna White, Weatherdorf, Phantom, Arnold the Pig, <clears throat> CC66, Chaskira, Cyborg. Noodle. Give me a second. No, wait for my tea for my show. Uh, we've got Chaskira, Cyborg Noodle, D Dork Cakes, Hey Mental, Hey Man, Ensiv, Gromit, Guest 37423, Kiss, Pwnsus, Sock Puppet, Smodads, The Holiest, Roger, and Z Pigs. So some of them are on and some of them are just logged on. And some of them are bots. They're like spies. They're smart, too. They learn how to do shit, these bots. So I was impressed. I didn't know what, you know, a bot was when it first got into this uh, chat room stuff. Now I'm a seasoned professional and I can even have an argument with a robot in a chat room. It's just amazing. Hmm. Now, I was uh, was kind of robbed of my co-hostage, Miss Mary, on the Dork table. So, I'm going to resort this week, yes, to links. Yes, I know, it's embarrassing, but you might find them interesting. I don't know if they're so much interesting as they are uh, unbelievable that we're going through this crap in this period of time. <laughs> and it seems like people are okay with it. Now, I don't really know if they are okay with it or not. I, I read they're okay with it. And apparently, if you look around and you take a look at life, to some degree, the majority is going to take this chew dick and sit right on it and not complain. Well, let me tell you a little something. That works for about, I don't know, two weeks tops. And then people start to get a little, uh, what's the right word? Uh, They get anxious. They start to realize that somebody else is telling them what they can't do. And that idea, no matter what country you live in or culture you're from, that'll usually make you a little bit cranky. And when you have a, a culture of cranky people, Somebody will snap, and then you got violence. And it brings in the states that they can tell you what to do. Now, nobody's fallen for it yet. But I got a strong suspicion it's coming. So, not all this, you know, prepared shit. Be prepared and shoot people and all, all that. Just, you know, uh, enjoy what you can. And when you can't enjoy it, don't do it. <laughs> Just... Try to not be forced into how you live. I just don't feel that the Danish government is taking this as seriously as they're claiming to. But, hmm. See, it's all a matter of what you read and where you read it 
from. So let's start with this little tasty morsel I discovered on the interwebs. And I'm going to do the reading of it, but uh, inside it, it has a link. And if you listen to the link, this doctor lady had something to say against the official narrative of the alleged coronavirus. <laughs> this, this thing is a mess. I mean, half the people are, aren't convinced there is one, and the other half are convinced we're all going to die of it, no matter what it is. Just call it something. And uh, you mix fear and, and uh, anything together, and fear usually wins out because well, they're in fear. <laughs> you can't teach them anything. So uh, for those of you that aren't in fear, have a few minutes to listen to the opposition. I have posted for your reading entertainment, Whistleblower, How CDC is Manipulating COVID-19 Death Toll. And apparently just saying that out loud will get you uh, very little acceptance on the YouTube channel. They do not like to hear opposition to their little dance. So let's see what this doctor has to say. And who the hell the doctor might be kind of helps. And it says here, by Great Gamo Game, Great Grame India. I hate it when they write these words all in one place. A Montana-based physician has blown the whistle. <laughs> okay, nice way to open on how the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, is exaggerating the mm -hmm, death toll by manipulating mm -hmm, death certificates. <laughs> See, because if you can read, you know what I didn't read. It's right here on the link, everybody. I'm not making this up for a change. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Dr. Annie Busek, MD, is a longtime Montana, I'll bet she knows Frank Zappa if she's up there in Montana, physician with over 30 years of experience practicing medicine. I'll bet she was there when Zappa went up there to go uh, start his ranch because he was going to raise dental floss. <laughs> Be a dental floss tycoon. Signing death certificates is a routine part of her job. Similar claims have also been made by Senator Dr. Scott Jensen from Minnesota, who said hospitals are getting paid more to list patients as... Wow, who would have ever thought a thing like that? Then you go under the picture and it says... Dr. Annie Bukasek, in a brief video presentation, Dr. Bukasek, probably butchering her name too, blows the whistle, <laughs> there we go, we kind of the blow thing, <laughs> on the way the CDC is instructing physicians to exaggerate deaths on death certificates. Few people know how much individual power and leeway is given to the physician, coroner, or medical examiner signing the death certificate. How do I know this? I've been filling out death certificates for over 30 years. <laughs> I couldn't say that one. Okay. More often than we want to admit, we don't know with certainty the cause of death when we fill out death certificates. That is just life. We are doctors, not God. <laughs> Autopsies are rarely performed, and even when an autopsy is done, the actual cause of death is not always clear. <laughs> See, TV has trained us so good. I've seen so many episodes of Columbo. Jeez, I could, find, I could spy the murderer across the room I just never do. But I could if if, if I had to. <laughs> okay, we'll get this right. All right, I, I got 
I made a joke. Um, back to the story. Uh, physicians make their best guesstimate and fill out the form. Then, that list of causes of death is, an, is entered into a vital records data bank to use for statistical analysis. Whoa, fancy schmancy. Which then gives out inaccurate numbers, hmm. as you can imagine. Those inaccurate numbers then become accepted as factual information, even though much of it is false. So even before we heard of Death certificates were based on assumptions and educated guesses that go unquestioned. When it comes to there is the additional data skewer. That is, get this, there is no universal definition of death. The Centers for Disease Control, updated from yesterday, April 4th, will uh, still states that mortality quote unquote data includes both confirmed and presumptive positive cases of <laughs> that's from their website and i think there's probably their website will be somewhere in this link i didn't look uh to continue with this epic saga for your safety and your security people. Because this is probably more the truth than what we're getting from the, uh, you know, the clap. That's, that's what Grimm calls them. I don't know. I don't like stealing from people, but that's a good one to steal. Because they are the clap, for sure. Anyway, back to, I'm stalling so I can hear my pipe one more time. Okay. Translation, the CDC counts both true cases and speculative guesses of the same. They call it death by... They automatically overestimate the real death numbers by their own admission. Prior to... People were more likely to get an accurate cause of death written on their death certificate if they died in the hospital. Why more accurate when a patient dies in the hospital? Because hospital staff has a physical examination findings labs, radiological radiologic studies, etc. To make a good educated guess, <laughs> that's priceless. It is estimated that 60% of people die in the hospital. But even with those in hospital deaths, the cause of death is not always clear, especially in someone with multiple health conditions, each of which could cause the death. Hmm, that kind of opens the door a little bit, doesn't it? I mean, it gives you something new to think about beside all this crap I've been reading on the fucking internet for the last month or so, whatever it's been, three weeks. But, <clears throat> I don't know, I guess I can rant on this link I just read and say this. I believe this more than I believe that we're all going to suffer from the virus. We're going to suffer from the lawmakers making these ignorant decisions to cover a financial collapse. <laughs> this is, you know, uh, a creative accounting disaster with a touch of insanity, just to cap it off. And when you really think it through, you've got a population of people that are willingly taking Rockefeller medicine daily. Some of these people are taking psych meds. <laughs> okay, well, you know, that that's all well and good in, in a sense. I mean, I don't have anything against people that want to live on drugs. That is not my personal problem. My personal problem here, fellow anarchist-minded souls out there, is that 
sadly, these are the people that are collectively taking the responsibility for these great decisions that are being made. Hmm. I'm not so much, I don't believe this is true. I, I'm not saying, I guess you can interpret it however you like, but I'm not saying that the people aren't going to get sick and die. What I am saying is that we live in a time in history where the people in power take control of how you hear the end result of things you don't understand. <laughs> so they can tell you blue is green and yellow is orange and red is black. And if you doubt it, all the other sheep in the room are going to start throwing shit at you and calling you names. You know? So it, it takes, hmm, takes quite a bit to stand on your own through this <laughs> pandemic. It's, hmm. Maybe it takes more intelligence than I have. You know, to gather and, and understand all this necessary information on the internet to prove that there is indeed something that's going to kill 2% of the population that get it. <laughs> wow. I've been terrified since I first read about this fucking nonsense. And I'm as insulted today by the collective response of my peers as I was when it started. All I can think of is how, are you people on drugs? <laughs> that might be the answer to maybe the lack of drugs. You know, when you take people's drugs away from them. Maybe at that point they're easier to ter terrorize with threats of shit they've seen in movies for the last 40 years. <laughs> you know, you went to the moon, right? You know, I mean, they've got people convinced there's crap on Mars roving around. I think it's in Wyoming, but hey, this is me. I'm a conspiracy theorist. If you haven't already heard, <laughs> I think I believe two things the government tell me, and I doubt those, and that's the names of the players and the date of the event that took place. And everything else is just a bunch of shit to distract me from the fucking laws that are right behind my back in Washington. And time after time, for however many, God, I could get all Alex Jones here and start freaking the fuck out. But, I mean, how many times have we been through this in a different way? And they just throw a rerun at the public of a, the same fucking thing with a different name. And these psych med motherfuckers are so stupid that they just do what they're told. That's how seriously disgusted I am with the results of this shit. Because so little proof that any of it's real. I think it's just ways for businesses to collapse that were already under and so heavily indebted to these banks. They could never, like America... You're never going to pay $24 trillion in debt off. Who are you kidding? You added, you added $4 trillion, I think it was 6 whatever it was, the stimulus package, and the bailout altogether. It was so astronomical. And people are, are just waiting in line for a check to help them pay the mortgage. Wow. When did this all take place? You know? I've said it too many times, so I, I won't say it again. But, yeah, I'm going to say it again. I, I feel like we're just all turning into a bunch of sissies, you know. And I told Sir, you know, she she might comply with state, and, but I'm not going to in the end. If they do all this viral nonsense and demand that you get an inoculation, I'm not going to do it. They're going to have to strap me down and do that shit. I'm too old to play these ignorant, childish games. And I don't believe I got this old by not knowing a thing or two. But the things that we were taught when we were young are ancient history today. And, wow, it's like listening to Larry and Rob talk about the electrical stuff. And I don't know what they're talking about all the time. They're sometimes in you know, math equations and comfort compass of this and degrees of that and I'm not looking at the same document Rob's drawing so my mind I'm a little behind these guys but just like the uh, 
people in the world. You got to believe in something. You got to believe somebody's story. But when a story is so told so badly and it's so obviously forced down your throat, and no good comes from it, I just think it takes a sissy to respect or want. I don't know about respect. Yeah, respect. You're respecting their authority over you, just blindly following without looking anything up yourself. And it wasn't like we didn't have time. I mean, this has gone on for fucking weeks, and there's still people harping every fucking day on the Internet (laughs) about the coronavirus and all the dead people. Yeah, well, there's doctors that are trying to tell you that these people are cooking the books. And the people that are cooking the books have admitted, yeah, we're cooking the books because we want you to get a shot. <laughs> so you can survive the flu. <laughs> and and to me, I'm a I'm an old guy, so I'm looking at you guys thinking, Wow, what happened to you? You know? Did did somebody raise their voice and ruin your day? What's wrong, sweetheart? And I suppose that could sound kinda uppity, but then on the other hand, I'm not afraid of anything. I go out there in the real world. I don't wear gloves. I don't sanitize my hands when I go to the store. And I work with plants here in the house. So sometimes I get a little bit of dirt under my fingernails. And I think, wow, that could scare the fuck out of some poor slob and he could have a heart attack and die. Because I didn't wash my fucking hands. And I went out in public. And two months ago, nobody would have looked at me. Nobody had to give a shit one way or the other if I wash my hands or not. All of a sudden now it's a big thing. Why? Because you were told it's a big thing. There is no proof, nothing, zero. Just story after story about some other place besides where you live. And I, uh, mm, I came to that position... By opening my eyes and taking a walk into town and paying attention to what was going on. And it seems to me that outside of the food industry and the bar industry here, everybody else seems to be cured of this fucking virus. There's no, I didn't see any masks. The only thing I saw was this over cleanliness when, uh, with the hand sanitizer to go into this certain kind of a store where they sell like health products and whatnot. And uh, <laughs> to me, it's just, I don't, I don't get it. You can't catch this thing the way that they're telling you. So all this hand washing is breaking your immune system down so that whatever is there, you got no defense against it. To me, this is how I look at this. Not, not that, uh, there's there's got to be a balance to life right? all this excessive shit is it's insane you can't you can't tell me that all these like stickers and things were just magically how where did they come from they got labels on the floor in danish but all the man you know manufacturing where did it come from there wasn't enough time to make it <laughs> Um, just a little bit confused on that particular point right there. It's these people were too prepared for something that's not real. And I've been through enough real disasters where people had fucking warning. Uh, like Andrew, I lived in Miami for Andrew. Uh, there was an earthquake in San Francisco. I think it was '89. I was there for that one, the World Series earthquake, because Oakland was playing San Francisco. And the thing happened right when the ball game started, so that always stuck with me for some reason. But the difference between how people behave through this virus thing and how they behave during a, a real catastrophe is 180. It's two different people. And I've seen the most horrible links. Like uh, today, I watched a thing about a guy delivering food to somebody elderly guess family member but they're in lockdown and quarantine and all this shit so the cops are arresting them and as far as i could get with it but uh wow now if this isn't just a meme somebody's making as a joke then it's true and either way if it was a meme it's not funny and if it is true 
this is actually taking place where I'm from. And where I'm living is a socialist country, and these people are exhibiting freedom and common sense. And they're abiding by this fucking hoax. And I think a lot of them, a lot more of them here know it than, than don't. And a lot of the people, it's like split, I don't know, what, 60, 40, there's still a few hangers on to the, to the dream, you know, that, that Bill Gates can get control of the world and inoculate us or some shit like that. It's fucking insane. I was, uh, <laughs> I wasn't a needle baby for fucking sake. I, anyway, so I'm going to end that first link and go on to the next one. I'm going to do a short show today, an hour show, because I ain't got no Miss Mary. And uh, the next link is probably just as irritating as the first one. But I thought, hey, why not do some links? <laughs> and then give some personal input at the end. <laughs> well, you probably all at John Klein anyway, but anybody that got stuck here, <laughs> poor fuckers, <laughs> I feel sorry for you now. Because I just posted the most horrible link in the history of links. And I guarantee if you read it or if you listen and you go along, it's... What's sad about it to me is that people have been dominated so totally that a few assholes in a few special buildings and a few cities and countries all over the planet can sit and dictate to the rest of us, poor little fucks running around in the world, what we can and cannot do and how we can do it, what time of day we can do it. Ah, it just gets old. So... For your listening approval today, I have dug up this really special link because Nancy Pelosi is awesome. We all know that. She's awesome. She's not amazing, but wow. And this link is called Nancy Pelosi Says Congress Will Not Reopen in April Warns Trump Not to Restart Economy. Now that's the title of this beauty. And it's written by Emily Zanotti from the DailyWire.com. So I don't, I don't know how credible it is either. Could be a bunch of shit. But I like the title. <laughs> so, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi told Politico Friday that she is considering keeping the House of Representatives out of session longer than the April 20th return from recess date and may not bring Congress back until well into May. Ho, ho, ho. And she's warned President Donald Trump to keep the country under lockdown even longer. Oh, you lucky people. I'm so jealous. Pelosi is drafting a fourth coronavirus relief package to be introduced when Congress returns from recess in the spring. <laughs> but it now appears that trillion-dollar aid bill will be indefinitely delayed while she holds her chamber in recess. <laughs> Pelosi, thank you, dear. Pelosi signaled Thursday that the House is unlikely to return to session later this month. Her clearest indication yet that Congress, like the rest of the country, could remain shuttered for weeks or even longer as the coronavirus crisis continues, according to Politico. She also had harsh words for President Trump. Oh, where's Hansel when you need him? Who has reportedly begun the process of convening a second <laughs> coronavirus task force. This one charged with plotting a course to reopen the country and restart the economy. Trump has said before that he hopes to roll out a plan to lift coronavirus related lockdowns as early as May 1st subject to the advice of several of his top health care 
experts. Well, his health care experts are really doing you guys a lot of favors. And me, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't I don't feel butt raped yet, but if I do I'll I'll be sure to let you guys all know as soon as it makes itself clear to me. That was a commercial announcement from the good folks at Flash Go. Um now, where was I? Hopefully we're going to be opening up very, 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 very soon, I hope. Trump said Thursday, during his daily coronavirus briefing, we're going to open up strong, very successfully, and I'd like to say even more successfully than before. Wow. How do you do better than shitty? Hmm? Really, folks. I, I don't know. All that make America great stuff to me just looked like a slogan on a box of soda. You know, a box of soda. A box of cereal, a can of soda. Some kind of advertising crap, though. Wow, you got to be really in, in the state to pay attention to half the crap that they tell you. So... I don't know. I guess I'm just saying in a sense, I find it difficult to be on a liberty-based site and see so much support for the hoopla that the state shoves down our fucking collective throat. <laughs> Thank you, honey. <laughs> My wife is being funny with me tonight. And uh, anyway, back to this epic song. Hey, you get a, you get stuck with me alone. I, it, this is the shit you get. I don't, I ain't no damn, uh, what's his name, Alex Jones? <laughs> uh, Pelosi wa wants the country in economic lockdown <laughs> much longer, she told Politico. Nobody can really tell you that I would never venture a guess. I certainly don't think we should do it sooner than we should. Pelosi said, this has taken, oh wow, this is priceless, Ex silence, this has taken an acceleration from when we started this. Little did we know then that at this point we'd be further confined. What the fuck is she even talking about? Yeah, I'm crazy like Alex Jones. I'd be selling you some drugs if I, if I was Alex Jones. I'd be selling you speed, man. Telling you his diet pills. But uh, I'd sell it to you at 20% off uh, retail prices. <laughs> but this is just, I couldn't believe what I was reading. I don't even know if I read it correctly. But I did post it in the notes. And I did post it in the RLM chat. Did I, it, he said, oh, <laughs> Grimner posted in the chat room, 11 times Donald Trump sounded a lot like Alex Jones. <laughs> and then he says, whoops, wrong bid. <laughs> I don't know. Man. It could always be worse. <laughs> but anyway, wow, we'd be further confined. <clears throat> These people are not going to be happy until there's nothing left for them to take. I mean, they've taken your, your freedom of speech. They've taken your freedom of touch. Uh, and there's not a lot of opposition. I guess what I'm seeing you now to the uh, recluse and the hermit, you know, my, my hat's off to you people. I couldn't do this. If this was real, I'd be freaking the fuck out. Okay, And I mean real because nobody's dying here and people aren't getting sick. So they're starting to realize the people that are already ill are the ones at the pharmacy. And everybody else is going on with their life. So, it doesn't take a, much of an education to see somebody's not telling the truth here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Anyway, oh, back to the story. I, I try to read it without laughing, but I, it's really hard. Maybe if I take another hit of the magic stuff, 
that comes in this here thing. Maybe that improved my reading ability. <laughs> so I can not laugh. No, I'll probably laugh through it anyway. All right. She also suggested that Trump's advisors rein the president in if he moves too quickly to restore economic function. I would hope that the scientific community would weigh in and say, you can't do this. It is only going to make matters worse if you go out too soon. Wow, that is weird. Who the hell are these people? You know, in the first fucking place. Madam Speaker and Bumblefuck, you know, Orange Head. What a dick. And these people are making the decisions for us as collectives about what we can do in public based on a fucking story, a lie, an exaggeration, a boo-boo. <laughs> I, I just don't get it, you know. I don't know if I mentioned it on the show, but earlier today, I was in town at the grocery, and uh, there's a guy in a wheelchair. You know, I don't see a lot of people pushing their self, you know, the hand wheelchairs. And he's probably younger than me, maybe 10 years. So I noticed him, and I saw him trying to turn, and the aisle, aisle he was trying to turn was not possible with the chair. So I, I saw what I thought at the time, I couldn't figure out, was I looking at anger or frustration. And I went with frustration. I thought, yeah, I'd be frustrated if I had to maneuver a chair around all this crap. But I'd be used to it to some point. But sure, frustrated it would be. And I, I go to the other side of the store and run into this fellow one more time. And uh, he notices me and we said, hey. And uh, I realized I was right. He was frustrated by the design of the area he was maneuvering, not angry because of anything. And it, it dawned on me just for a split second that I wonder how many other times where I've looked at somebody and just assumed that they're angry because they're in a frustrated moment. And that, that one moment is the thing that I paid attention to. And then I stopped, didn't follow through and see where it went. So I guess in my old age, what I'm learning to do is uh, not assume in the first place, you know, and how would this apply to the, I guess the Pelosi link and the, and the Corona link is it's easy to uh, jump on the side where everybody's popular and, and they're all getting along doing the right thing and all that horse shit. But I don't, I don't do that. And people, a lot of the time, they assume, well, you're just always have to be different. You know, you just never join the club or the group or do what you're told, whatever the excuse is. Um, and it, they would be correct, but I've been involved, like I was talking earlier, I've been involved in real life catastrophe where you know storms are taking people's houses away. So, no, there's a big difference between anger and being shocked by something happening, but they look very similar. And I think it takes a lot to follow through and see if something is done in anger or if it's just done in alarm, surprise, you know, what the fuck is going on? And I take for granted my ability to walk to a level that it takes other people in a wheelchair to struggle for me to realize, well, how fucking lucky I got it, you know? Because there, there's people that go, oh, I wouldn't walk to the store and carry a bag on my bag and all that horse shit. And I, I just always thought in the back of my head, you know, there's a lot of people that would if they could, but they're not physically capable of it because of illness or disease or accident, trauma. And like I was telling Mary, you know, and trauma can take you anytime it pleases. There's no rules to trauma. Accidents happen. That's why they call them accidents. You don't plan an accident. You can't prepare for an accident. That's what the whole accident thing's about. Is you something went wrong and you found out you weren't really in control after all. You just you just believe you are because things go right for a number of years or a long extended period of time. But I don't know. 
the end has a way of finding us all eventually, and some people live longer than others. And I think the system has finally perfected a way to keep us in terror of dying without ever having to tell us that out loud. Just with this threat, this coronavirus crap and all these other viruses, 30 years of viruses, people, come on. If they haven't got us yet with a fucking virus, then they're exaggerating. They can't. And they've tried every excuse for everything they've ever used. Nuclear didn't work. People survived nuclear. I can't think of anything that... I mean, war. People survive war. People rebuild. <laughs> oh, there's another scam for another show. But uh, civilizations are toppled, and then civilizations are rebuilt and changed and made into something different. And the history is, you know, told. <laughs> and a couple of hundred years go by. And look at us. Look at how civilized we are. Look at all our accomplishments and all the great things we can do. Whoops, somebody got a virus. <laughs> well, I guess we were wrong. Okay, I don't buy all that horse shit. I think what we've got going on is truly just... This is how the only way these morons in power can handle the reality of a financial collapse. And the things that they're doing are so strange, like destroying milk supplies, shutting down uh, farmers, <laughs> making, making markets just leave the fruit and vegetables in the fields to, to rot. Why would anybody in their right mind do a thing like that? Well, I think I've seen a fella named Bill Gates talking about cutting the population down if they work really hard at it. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> He's got us virus on the internet. He's got us virus in the physical world. Hmm? So, is it possible to con all the people all of the time and <laughs> I think so I think they got us and they got us with the majority of the consent most people are going to side with mama state on this particular argument this uh, virus nonsense and the reason is movies in you know, internet newspapers over the years all these this has been set up generation after generation for us to accept and bend over the table and take our own pants down and beg the government to stick it in to you. And some of us ain't going to do that. There's a lot of people that will in the end. They'll, you know, I guess there's a lot of people that are going to say they won't that'll break. I don't believe I'm one of them. I, I really don't expect to see it come to that. I'm just saying that. Should it? No, I'm not a sheep. Well, so as long as I'm on the radio talking all my crazy nonsense, then you know I haven't been inoculated by the state. Because uh, something like that were to happen to me by some form of force, then I'm, I would give up. That would be the end of my freedom. Because my freedom is dependent on me making my own decisions about what I do. And uh, to be punished for uh, being a threat to society based on something that's not possible in the first place is just a little over the top, you know. Not that you can't pass the flu, but that you're not going to you're not going to make enough people out there in the physical world ill enough to make it worth stopping your actions to prevent it. It's I'm not wielding a weapon. I'm not carrying a fucking gun out there shooting randomly at people. It's a different kind of threat. Yet, here we are, right? All these brilliant fucking minds, and they can't look at the same damn lie and see the same damn thing. We're all seeing different angles of this story for some reason. And you get some people and some people that don't get it all. I don't, I don't understand. And I've tried, and I've tried, and I've tried. I feel like Jagger. I can't get no satisfaction. And, you know, wow. Okay, let me see if I can't read some more of this crazy light, Pelosi. 
<sighs> Boy, I'm sure glad I'm not. Oh, somebody. Uh, <clears throat> I I went on vacation in 2011. I want to clear this up for anybody that's confused out there that does pay attention to my uh, radio crap. Well, I started out in America. And in 2011, I went on a 30-day vacation to Scotland. <laughs> and I ended up staying in Scotland for two and a half years. And uh, while I was in Scotland, I was playing around on the interwebs, and I met this Danish woman named Sirk. And uh, I was planning to leave Scotland at some point. Well, it, well, then I met her, and it kind of slowed it all down a little bit. And came to meet her, and we've been to been together ever since we physically met so i've been told i i ran away from america well i'd like to take credit for having the foresight to have been that brilliant and escaping but that's not what happened it's just luck or fortune or whatever brought me to where i'm at all that kind of horseshit and i've told sir you know i'm just glad you weren't you know in the Sudan or South Africa, because I would have gone. And, you know, the results would have been the same. So where she was had no uh, no bearing on it. It was just that's where she was. So she would have been in Nebraska to have gone there. So eh, it's all her fault for being Danish. <laughs> I just blamed you for it. <laughs> I don't know. I just... I, somebody brought that up the other day about me running away. <laughs> I wish, I wish I would have been that fucking smart and been so aware of uh, the future to have made a decision like that. Because uh, the last eight years of reading about my home has just been heartbreaking, and it brings me to what I'm reading now that I'm going to finish. Uh, okay, where was I? Hmm. That's an odd statement, given that Pelosi and others were still at work, even as states declared full lockdowns to prevent or slow the spread of coronavirus. The $2.2 trillion CARES Act, the third coronavirus relief package, was passed just before Congress left Washington, D.C. for their Spring recess. Oh, their spring recess. Poor fuckers, they're so worked. Oh. On Thursday, Pelosi, who now says there will be little more than a skeleton crew of federal legislators in Washington until at least May, stood in the way of an emergency relief bill that would have added three hundred fifty billion dollars to the Paycheck Protection Program, a small business relief fund that is swiftly running out of cash. She implied in her speeches Thursday afternoon that she wanted the bill brought before the full House and Senate rather than passed by unanimous consent something that can't happen unless Pelosi gets all of her own members on the same page and in the same room. Small business owners may now have to wait for months to see additional relief funds. Wow, there's your government hard at work. And I don't care what you call it. You know, um, Republican, Democrat, not so bad, bad, bad. It's all the same bullshit. You, know, you just get the suit you want telling you to bend over the table. I guess maybe if it's somebody that you like telling you to bend over the table, bending over the table isn't so bad. I, I don't see the benefit of pol uh, political signs. Communism or whatever, or capitalism. It's all the same bullshit. We all got to do what we're told by the system in the long run, whatever that is. And... <laughs> See, I started out, I thought it was really just simple, you know. Uh, I just keep my distance from my fellow man. Uh, we'll see. What other strange behavior was I exhibiting? I was keeping my distance just because I'm like that already. So, I guess when they reopen the bar, I go get, you know, go down and sit at 
with a far end of the bar where I like to sit where nobody else really sits. Maybe they'll make a plaque in my honor to hang over it when I'm gone that says, here was the guy that brought us social distancing. But I don't think so because there's other guys that have done the very same thing before me. It's just something that people do. And just not a lot of us. You know, like Grimm's got his uh, his isolation uh, what do you, hermit life. Hmm. Now, me, I've got my isolation partner life. So all this crap that's destroying everything else kind of works out in my benefit in the long run in a weird, sick way. I, c- I could see making a positive out of all this negative. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. It hasn't changed my life. It's changed my uh, feelings, I guess, from reading all the horrible crap going on all over the fucking world. Everybody's suffering. And then I go to the grocery store and I look around and everybody's still the same as they were last month. We just had this little lull where certain things were shut down for a bit. And uh, I don't know. If you know you're, if, if I don't see a lot of people that are all scruffy looking and haven't had their hair trimmed, or the women don't seem like uh, they just rolled out of a a haystack. So with all these, with all these hair places cut shut down, you would expect to see you know shaggy looking people walking around among you, but nobody looks any different today than they did before. This hoax hit us. And uh, fortunately for us, the stores that were shut down were stuff you don't need in the first damn place if you live like I do. (laughs) I don't care about haircuts. And even if I did, guess what? Circle Sister would cut my hair. (laughs) And she has offered, and she has done it, trim here and there over the years. But... uh, See, there's always somebody that can do these things that you know in person, any damn way. Uh, as far as the bar thing goes, I can drink and smoke home all I like. My wife does not say, hey, you've had too much to drink. Hey, you've had too much. I, I don't do all that crap. But if you go out in public, <laughs> hey, you've had too much to drink. And then you can't smoke out in public in the first place because it's against the law. But someday... Someday in the future, you know, when people get over all this stupidity, (laughs) I guess I'm talking about the year 5093 or something. But uh, someday in a a world far ahead of us, people will actually be able to sit down and not doubt that they're being told the truth about something, either something that is or something that took place. And I think that. The dork table folk understand being lied to. (laughs) This crew that hangs out with me on the dork table, there's not a lot of common links to us. We're very individual, different people. we got mental here. Dork Cakes is visiting me today. He comes by and supports my radio. we got Miss Kate and Grimner and Woody and Lone Frog and Moose Girl. You know, they're chit-chatting on the main feed. Probably waiting for the good stuff to come on under John Prime. Because he just died the other day. Of course, this is, you know, these are... I don't remember people freaking out when uh, David Bowie died. I don't remember people people freaking out uh, when Robin Williams died. These guys weren't very old. Uh, I remember people freaking out when Hendrix died, but I was a little too young to understand at the time what they were freaking out about. And then, oh boy, talk about weird. Uh, I'm going to end the show with a little story I read about uh, Jimi Hendrix. Now, Jimi Hendrix was supposed to be, uh, he supposedly died of a drug overdose, right? But the circumstances around the end of his life kind of went funny like this. He had a, a manager. I forget the guy's name, but this is all stuff you can look for if you're really interested. I'm just killing a few minutes on the end of the show. 
that his manager was stealing from him. And he just opened Electric Ladyland, the music studio. So, what reason would there be for a rock musician to accidentally overdose on drugs? Then his manager was robbing him blind. <laughs> you know, well, there you go. But those are, you know, it was harder to prove shit back in those days, too, and easier to get rid of a body and blame. Just like the corona thing. You know, as long as the doctor says, hey, this guy died from an overdose, we don't know if he had four bullet holes in his forehead, or maybe he got strangled to death. Maybe there was some knife wounds in his back. We have been trained as a collective to accept the word of man, man. And whatever the man, man tells you, man, that's truth, man. And if you've lived as long as I have, or even part of it so far, then you have got to have been able to look back at some point and see where they didn't tell you the truth. And the thing that I demand from the government, I, I won't participate in the fucking government because they're full of shit and they fucking lie to me. And as long as I hold that opinion... I'll stand back and I'll watch and I'll wave and I'll look and I'll sign their little documents when I, abs when I absolutely have to. But they'll never have my mind. <laughs> and and as uh, if you've paid any attention to the show, that it it wouldn't be too big of a of a jump to be able to do it. I'm pretty agreeable as long as what you're telling me isn't bullshit. So. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me on my solo dork without Miss Mary while she's recovering table. And uh, she's doing well as a recovery thing. She says she's feeling better, so I'm, I'm hoping the best for her and whatnot. Sending her out my magical, mystical uh, waves to make her feel better. Because uh, if she comes on the show, she said she was a little sensitive in the uh, abdomen from the crash, you know, so that making her laugh would be painful. <laughs> and, and I try to do that. And sometimes I, I do make her laugh. So anyway, yeah, thanks Grimner and everybody else that played along with me. And what do we got? I guess I can do a schedule. We got a small schedule. Now we have, um, tomorrow morning, we got Grim will come on with the blues and I tried listening to it on my headphones. and I couldn't, I was so disappointed. Uh, it was one of the times Sirk had her family over. They were cooking, and it was just I just wanted to hear it in the headphones, and I couldn't. So hmm. that was one one other problem I had. But we got uh, the blues about noonish. I think he comes on and he plays that, and then we start playing trivia. I think the trivia game comes on. I forget the times because I'm in Denmark, so I can't do your time zones. Uh, but we play trivia, and then Hal comes on after that. Hal Anthony comes on with Behind the Woodshed. And I agree with Hal on most of, of his points. I'm just not, uh, I don't buy the Admiralty Court arguments. I don't, I don't want to play that, so I don't want to learn it. But I've always said in the past that if I ever do need to know, what do I do if I get slapped by an Admiralty Court? Hal Anthony's done enough shows. There's got to be something on there to help me somewhere. Um, and then Monday, we got Grimner. Grimner comes on. I know the time because it's 1 o'clock in the morning here. Uh, I think at 7 o'clock on the, on the East Coast Grim that you do leftovers on Monday night. And then uh, I come on on Tuesday. And I messed up. I forgot. I got the weekend mixed up with days because of all this. Everybody's doing weird things. Uh, yesterday, Thursday, I do the uh, drop in a coil with Larry and, and Rob Works. And uh, I thought for some reason it was Saturday because we had a house full of family. In my mind, it was Saturday for some reason, and I do radio at 9 o'clock on Saturday. <laughs> so, or I do it at 8 o'clock on Saturday and 9 o'clock during the week. I, had, see, I can't even say it straight. It's just insane. So, so Cirque wants me to just do it at 8 o'clock all the time. So I, I try to work that out with everybody and get organized. And, you know, I don't know what it is about 
following stupid little rules and being in t- on time and things. I'm I'm not late a few minutes. I'm late like eight hours because <laughs> you know when you add the time zones into it. So anyway, that that did a, a one hour show. So I good luck with with your John Prime um, program, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy yourself. And if you didn't catch the show because you were watching that, I understand. I'm I don't compete. I just do this for a giggle you know, to leave a record behind. So. Uh, Thanks a lot, and Roger Wilco over and...